Good morning, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Diva with your brother DJ Sam Rock. I'm here every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all week, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, or at least I try to be. So forgive me for my lateness. Forgive me if I don't stream. This is live. This is not a TV show. This is a live stream. So a lot of people forget. I say, hey, man, you wasn't on air yesterday. Um, yeah, because I probably overslept. A situation happened or I couldn't get to the camera. Um, but I dedicate my first of the morning, whether I'm on the camera or not, to the Lord Jesus Christ, him being my Savior, my Lord, and my God. Amen. And that's a suggestion I have for everybody. Set the first of your day, your first of your time, and set it apart for God, and you will be blessed by it. Um, that's all I can say about that, because whatever you start with in your day, whenever you have, whatever you're thinking about during the day, amen, We'll kind of like navigate your attitude for that day. We'll kind of, kind of kind of like navigate your day, period. And it will give you perspective. And last time I checked, God is good. When I say God, by definition, that I could see is that he's good. And when it comes to good or evil, God is good. He's not evil. So if you have God mindset, right? If you have the God mindset and you start off with that God mindset, I'm truly believing that that God mindset will really... Um, navigate the day or help you through the day, whether it's a good day or a bad day. Now the days are different, right? You can have, you could wake up to a, you know, great start of the day, or you could wake up to bad news. But what's consistent every day is that God is good. It's never a day that God says, "Oh, today I'm, today I'm evil." He doesn't do that. You know, today I'm not going to be good. God doesn't do that. He's good all the time. And God is love. So good morning and God bless you and welcome to the Morning Devo. I hope you are blessed and I hope you're going to be blessed today. We're going to be talking about uh, the fact and the scriptures um, that God is a God of zeal. The zeal of God. What does that mean? Well, we're coming into a season or we're already in the season besides the season of the pandemic and what's going on in the climate and political issues and you know all this other stuff. We're going through that too, but at the same time, we're going through a season or in a season, we're in a season, getting our hearts prepared to celebrate Christmas. For Christians, you know, it's a split decision whether or not you want to celebrate Christmas or not. It's up to you. Uh, I'm not talking about the pagan Christian celebration. I'm talking about celebrating the Lord Jesus and his birth. The reason why I say that all the time because in the scriptures, it does say the story of how Jesus was birthed from a virgin. That's something in my mind that we should celebrate when we don't have to wait for December 25th as a traditional thing. We could just know every time I read the scripture, I'm celebrating. My heart rejoices. My heart celebrates because God, spaceless, right? Timeless, immaterial, right? And he came. From heaven to his throne room to this earth on a mission. And the, the zeal of God proved that mission out. Amen. And he succeeded on that mission. The Lord Jesus succeeded on that mission. Why people don't leave, believe in this? Because of the heart. It's a heart issue. Because if you look at the scriptures, it's undeniable. If you look at the, the Bible, it's undeniable. And some people say that can't be true. Well, then I guess to that person, it can't be true. But if you're looking for truth, the Bible shows it, reveals it, confirms it. And there's testimony of thousands and millions and all these people testifying the same thing. That the word of God is real. That God is real. That Jesus changes lives and transforms heart. But it's the zeal of God. Amen. Um, that we first see. And I'm going to read some scriptures and I'll explain it a little bit more. God bless you, Pastor Michael Jakes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome to the Morning Devo. And I'm going to pray and I'm going to share this out. Um, still can't figure out, uh, is everybody getting, why nobody's getting my notifications? I guess there's a setting in my group that I have to set. Uh, a lot of people are not getting the notifications when I go live. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go live directly from my profile page because I'm in trouble with the Facebook police. And I'm trying to lay low on that as well. So, um, so I'm doing, I'm doing it through the guidelines. I'm doing it through a group. And I guess the group doesn't send out uh, notifications. I could be wrong, though. So somebody 
who's a Facebook guru, correct me if I'm wrong, but do is there a notification when you go live on a group or a page? I'm on my group page. I'm on my group. So do, does everybody get a notification in my group when I go live? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Trust me. I'll figure that out. So let me pray. And then I'll give you a minute to share. I'll give both of us a minute to share. As a matter of fact, I, actually, I'll give a little bit more time to share. Amen. Maybe two minutes or three. Two minutes at least. Okay. If you don't mind. Because I want to get this out. Because usually... Um, the people who follow and the people who get on this morning Devo are usually on right away with me. But I'm starting to notice um, that they're not getting notified. And then they watch it later, which is all good. So uh, I just want everybody that usually knows about this morning Devo to know that I'm still here. And don't think that I went away. Okay? Is that, is that okay with you? So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity, this morning Devo. I thank you, Lord God, that you are a God of zeal. You gave us so many reasons to believe, and yet you respect the unbelief of people in their hearts. So I pray, Lord God, that this morning Devo will satisfy the cravings of the heart for people who are looking and seeking truth. I pray, Lord God, that this season of Christmas season, Lord God, that will be a life-changing season for so many, miraculous season for so many, and that you will get the glory, honor, worship, and praise. I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection over every single listener, every single viewer, them and their family, their whole household, in the name of Jesus. And I set forth victorious, angelic hosts um, to go towards everyone and be with everyone that's attaching or will attach later on to this morning Devo. I pray this by faith, all in a powerful name, in the name of Jesus. I'll give you a couple of minutes to share this out, and I'm going to try to figure something out real quick. And if you don't mind, I'll be right back. God bless. for the weight um just wanted to get that solidified in my mind because then my mind believe it or not if i don't get that addressed i'll be doing um this morning devo with all of that in my mind so i had to get that out of the way it's just the way my mind works i said man why is nobody getting notified notified so let's go into the scripture isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and verses 6 and 7 for to us a child is born listen closely because this is so important this is, this is what separates um, the Christian belief from every other belief system. And if you read this clearly, you will understand why. 
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. You see that? You see the difference there? Child's a child is born, but a son is given. Okay, it's a gift, right? And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. He, this child, this son, will be Mighty God, called Mighty God. The understanding of people who want to quote scriptures and throw uh, at Christians and saying, you guys believe in this Bible and this, that. Now, earlier, like a little earlier, secret, I woke up a little earlier today and I was on an app that I'm engaging in now uh, to preach the gospel message and to get um, rejected and cursed out and all this other stuff, the fun stuff, right? To do evangelism in this app. Uh, there's a, a guy, he seems angry, he seems, you know, he hates everything except for his own system of worldview. And a Christian was on with him a little while ago, just just happened. And he was trying to, the guy who's, he calls himself atheist, he was trying to <laughs> tell the Christian what the Christian believed. And the Christian was like, um, no, that's not what the Bible says. Oh, your Bible says this, your Bible says that, your Bible says, you know, you ever met a person like that, that they know more about Christianity than a Christian, yet they hate Christianity and religion and everything? But if you're honest and you read the scripture with an honest heart, you will see that there's a difference between a child being born and a son being given. Right? So let me just, I'm going to camp out here for just one minute. because This is important. I think it's important. When I was born, me, Sam, I didn't know what my gender. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know if I was going to be a boy or a girl. God knew that. When my dad and my mom got together, the seed was sown, get into the egg, right, of my mom, they didn't know whether I was going to be a boy or a girl. Now we have modern technology now. This is back in the 70s. We have modern technology now that they can see early, on the early stages the gender of the, the baby. They can see that now. But before, I don't think it was like that. Or at least we didn't have the right amount of money to get that type of coverage. But... When a son is given by God, he knows that it's going to be a boy. He knows it's going to be who it is and what that mission or what that life was going to be about. So a child is born. We can understand as human beings. But when a son is given the way God does it, it takes some time to realize what's going on here. So that's why I just wanted to camp out there for a little minute. Right. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So these are what he will be called already. Okay, so this is prophetic word, prophecy. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. No end to his peace and his government. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The zeal of God will accomplish this. Will accomplish this. Now, these are statements that I can't make. Although I love my son. I love my son to life. Not to death, to life. I can't do all of that. Of what God did for through Jesus. He already knew. He inspired the prophet Isaiah to speak these things out. And it will be accomplished. I have hope. Hope for my son. Right? For my children. For my daughters. My son. That they will trust and believe in this mighty God. And this wonderful counselor. And this everlasting father. And this prince of peace. That is my hope. But when God says a thing, it is accomplished. Amen? So that's why I try to be a repeat of what God says. I'm not dumb. I know the power of God is amazing, so I'm going to repeat what his word says. I'm going to be a God repeater, a word repeater, amen? So that way, whatever happens, whether people believe me or not, they have to deal with the powerful, living word of God. The word of God is alive. God bless you, Sister Lissette. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. You found me good. Damien, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So what's happening? Let me know if you're getting notifications, first of all. Did you get a notification when I first started this live? Let me know yes or no in the comments, please, because I have to see if I have to set something up. God bless you. 
Brother Ray, I hope you're enjoying your new car, man. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Amen. So Jesus is, we read who the wonderful counselor is. Well, it doesn't even say who the wonderful counselor is in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. doesn't say. But Jesus is the wonderful counselor. So you and I could go to him for anything at any time for advice for you know whatever the situation is in your life we could go to jesus anytime 247 right he's available okay nobody's getting the notifications and but yet ray said he got a notification so listen to this um brother damien sister lisette um make sure i don't know if you joined the group the facebook group that i have it's called the blaze bible study i'll leave the link Join that group, and I guess you have to follow, and I guess there's a bell or something that you'll get the notifications. I'll find out. I'll find it out, and I'll let you guys know. Thank you. And, oh, okay, I'm freezing up too. Um, um, reset, you know, refresh your phone, and maybe that'll work out, okay? Because it seems like um, everything's going good over here on this side. So refresh your phone, Sister set, or, you know, get out and go back in. Maybe that'll help out and make sure your either your data or your Wi-Fi is is good. Okay, thank you for letting me know though. It's, these are these are things that I, I wouldn't know unless somebody tells me. Amen. God bless you. All right. So Jesus is the wonderful counselor. You could go to him for anything at any time. He's never too busy. I used to think literally, like no joke. I used to think, uh, let me not bother God. He must be busy, you know, in other parts of the world dealing with issues. But that I didn't know the greatness of God during that time that I used to think that way. God is so big and so great that he could answer every single question from every single person all around the world at the same time, individually to their, you know, individually. Like answer this, answer that all at the same time. Don't ask me to uh, <laughs> to explain that. Amen. And but that's what he is. He's the wonderful counselor. Amen. Uh, there's no appointment needed. God's always available. So for all my atheist friends and people who don't believe, agnostics and skeptics, um, do you realize that you yourself, instead of uh, attacking sometimes the people who believe in God, you know that you yourself can go to this God that you might not believe in, that you might not you know, uh, realize he's there, you might not think he's for you, but you could go to him. The strange thing when I speak to people about the zeal of God, about you know Christmas season, about Jesus, is that they always point to people. Say, you people believe this, that, and the third. You people, you people. And I always wonder, is it all about what we're saying or is it all about what God said and we're just repeating what God says? So I hope people realize that you could go to an app and you could read the scripture for yourself. I really like, it's a little scary to me. It's an eye-opener to me. I'm, I'm engaged in this platform, me and Brother Reese Johnson. We're engaged in this platform on an app that, you know, you could host podcasts and all this live podcasts. I'm starting to realize people are not, they're spitting out stuff that they heard or saw on YouTube or on Facebook, but they're not going to the reference for themselves. It's the weirdest thing. Maybe that's been going on for a long time. But for me, it's like an eye opener when I actually hear that come back to me. When somebody's saying, the Bible says, and they misquote it, they misunderstand it, misquote it. And sometimes what they're saying is not even in the Bible. And then you ask them, where'd you get that information from? Oh, I got that from Wikipedia, YouTube, Facebook, or somebody, one of my teachers told me that. We could go to the Word of God on our own. He sympathizes with my weaknesses. And a couple of weeks ago, I shared my weaknesses, um, and I was honest enough to do that live, shared my weaknesses. Because of my weaknesses, God is made strong. He was tempted. We're talking about God here. Jesus, we're talking about Jesus and his humanity. He was tempted in every way that I'm tempted and that you're tempted. Yet, he never gave in. He never sinned. He never gave in to those temptations. He was the author, right, of Ephesians, no, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He's the author of that. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 about the temptation. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. 
and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So he himself was tempted in every way, the same way we are tempted, but he never gave in. Um, there's some temptations that I gave into, but God, through Jesus, never gave into those temptations. His perfect counsel, perfect counsel, corrects my self-counsel and my self-thinking. And I wish people would understand that. The zeal of God is there. Amen. There's no way that God will not address the situation in your life if you go to him and ask him for help. The Bible says he will, he will no way cast anybody away for those who seek him, go, for those who go to him. So the question still stands, why do people go to other people for, you know, for help? Or why do other people blame other people for a situation in their lives? Or why do people go to other people and call out their God without them themselves being honest and going to God for themselves to seek? I say that like that's how I got saved. I was sharing my testimony with an atheist last night. And I don't know why I shared it because I knew at the end of my testimony, he was just going to say, so? <laughs> but I shared it anyway. He wanted to hear it. I shared my testimony. The fact that I didn't believe and trust in Jesus before I got saved, evidently. And I was calling God out. This is my testimony. I don't, I'm not asking you to call God out. I called God out, this, that, and the third. And the next thing you know, my life was changed. So I was in trouble, right? Like my reasoning was off. Because I thought that this God that I called upon wasn't going to do anything. I thought it was all in my head, like we're accused of, you know, people accuse Christians of. I thought it was all in my head, but I didn't know this God. He made himself known to me. So his perfect counsel corrects my self-counsel and self-thinking. The wonderful counselor gives guidance to my foolish heart. And only a fool says in their heart that there is no God. That's the scripture. Sounds harsh, right? Did I take a, Did I just shoot a, you know something at somebody? That's what the scripture says. Only a fool says in their heart there there is no God, because we can see the effects of what God has already created. Jesus is the mighty God. Now, I could go. I could have got on this morning Devo and said, "Hey, God bless you. You know, God is God. Love is love." And you know, I would probably got more engagement, people liking, loves, or whatever. But as soon as I say that Jesus is the mighty God, then there's issues with a lot of people. Can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be. <laughs> I hear that a lot lately. All things were created by and for him. Apart from him, nothing was made that has been made. So even if you believe in evolution and the Big Bang, um, yesterday uh, there was people saying it was an explosion or expansion and then uh, somebody gave an analogy of a balloon. When you blow up a balloon and you pop it, it's both expanding and exploding at the same time. Listen, that's way past my my greed of intelligence, I guess. I'm thinking an explosion. Some people say, no, it's expansion. Whatever. But God created all of that. Whether or not it was explosion or an expansion, there had to be a mind behind that creation. Not just something creating itself. Um, nothing creating nothing is not making any sense, but someone or something creating something makes more sense. Don't you think? Or is, I know, um, it's just me thinking out loud. Sorry. So Jesus is the mighty God. All things were created by and for him. Apart from him, nothing was made that has been made. He touched blind eyes, his testimony, eyewitnesses through the scriptures. He touched blind eyes and they saw he, he touched withered limbs and there's people in modern day that I know that have witnessed these type of miracles right in front of their face. Arms, you know, being um, replaced with new arms and hands and legs and all that. They are eyewitness to that those things. No hallucinations, no drugs involved, anything. And they saw these miracles happen and they testify. I know these people. And so miracles are still happening. We don't happen as often because imagine, imagine if miracles happen all the time. And I go up to somebody and preach the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they say, oh, the resurrection? You mean somebody came back to life? I said, yeah, Jesus came back to life. And they'll be like, oh, my uncle just came back to life. If it was a normal thing, then, you know, miracles would be accepted, I guess. But since miracles are not happening as much as we see them happening, right? We want to see them happen all the time. I want to see miracles happen all the time. Those type of miracles, like people rising from the dead, 
um, people getting healed from cancer instantly in the name of Jesus. I want to see that. And I know a lot of people want to see that. But just because we don't see it as often doesn't mean God stopped doing the miracles. It's just that if miracles were so common, right, it would be like another day in the park. And no, everybody would be so used to these miracles that nobody would be able to, um, you know, celebrate the miracle. Oh, um, um, you prayed in Jesus' name and so-and-so got healed from cancer. And you'd be like, yeah, in the name of Jesus, isn't that powerful? And they'd be like, no, I prayed in the name of, uh, you know, whatever, <laughs> some other God, and the same thing happened. So you know what I'm saying? Like, miracles are exclusively different. God's miracles are different. So he raised the dead. He, um, he calmed the raging storm, so he spoke to the elements. He got rid of sickness. He, 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 he dealt with the, the body of, a, of mankind, illnesses, um, sight, hearing, everything. The mute would speak. He arose from the dead and destroyed the last enemy, which is death. The zeal of God caused all of this to, to, call, caused all of this to go into play. And Jesus, when he came, he accomplished what his mission was too. So Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He reigns as king. And one day, one day soon, he will bring peace to this earth. Not to another earth, not to alternative dimension, not to um, different universes. This earth, he's talking about where we live. He will bring peace, eternal peace to the earth. But now he brings peace to the heart. So we have the peace to the heart part already. We have that. You know, people say, well, what is God doing in your life? How do, how do you know it's a supernatural power? Because he gave me peace, changed my life, changed my heart, changed my mind. Uh, I was um, on with an atheist last night. And he says, no, that was willpower. You did that all on yourself. You changed yourself. Congratulations. You gave yourself new morality. This, that, and third. Can you imagine that? If one day you could just wake up and say, I'm going to change. I'm going to be, you know, a good person. Uh, that would be great. But that's not reality. I have I haven't heard not one person honestly told me that one day they were um, into all kind of sin and all kind of drugs, sex, alcohol, and everything. And the next day, because of willpower, they got up and said, "I'm gonna just stop," and then they lived a happy life after that. I've never heard it. Maybe there's testimonies like that, and I have to respect everybody's testimony. But for me, that wasn't happening. I liked my sin before Jesus. I liked to live a crazy, ratchet lifestyle. I liked being with fast things and fast girls and fast women. I liked having fast money. I liked what I was doing. Um, so if I could have changed that, why would I have? I wasn't asking for change. Um, but the emptiness of my life led me to believe that, listen, there has to be something more than this humans living on this planet. There has to be somebody that could help me out other than somebody that says they can help me and they fail me, right? So I called out this God. And I found out later on, as I started experiencing God in my life by his power, the word showed me who this God was, right? So I, I started to realize that this was a who operating. There was three who's operating and one what. So it was a Father, Holy Spirit, Son, well, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then there was three persons in one God, right? Operating all at once and showing up in the scriptures and showing up in my life. So whatever I was reading and believing was actually happening and being demonstrated in my life. And I tried to explain that last night to an atheist and they were like, no, that's just your your imagination, that's just your understanding. It was all done by willpower. Congratulations. So I understand. I truly understand. Although I, I, I always pray and hope that people will get this zeal of God, will get the will get the reason for the season of Christmas. Um, but I can only repeat what the word says and hope the word will get to the hearts of the people. So Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He reigns as King and one day will bring peace eternal peace to the earth. I don't want to bypass the eternal word, eternal peace to the earth, but now he brings peace to the heart. He brings peace because he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. 
Not that type of peace, because that's temporal peace. He gives you eternal peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You can see that in John chapter 14, verse 27. That's Jesus speaking. For unto us a child is born. Amen. And enter the king, exit the darkness. When Jesus showed up the light of the world, darkness, wherever that darkness was, had to go. Everywhere Jesus walked, where there was darkness, you, see, you always see con the confrontation. Um, he was calling out demons. Everything was happening. Sickness, he was calling that out. There was a time that he did very few, the Bible says, of miracles because of people's lack of faith. And, you know, God's a just God, so he's not going to put his faith and force us. You got to have faith. You better have faith, and he's not going to force his way um, into your life. So that's why... Uh, again, going back to my atheist friend yesterday, he says, I'm just looking for answers. Why is God taking so long to answer me if there's a God? I say, it's a hard thing. And I said, I will be praying. And he cursed me out. Basically, he says, I don't need your prayers. Um, you know, just down the third, very angry. So it's definitely a situation going on in a lot of people's hearts and minds. And, you know, it could be church hurt. It could be they were hurt by their parents. It could be so many things. I don't know everything, but God knows everything. So that's why it's so powerful for us to pray for people, um, to experience that. You know, my prayer for an atheist would be that God will reveal himself to them. There's no proof or evidence I could give them. You could share your testimony. Jesus um, Jesus could do uh, a great thing right in front of them. But if they don't know who's doing the great things, if they don't know who's doing the miracles, if they don't know who this wonderful counselor is, if they don't know who this Prince of Peace is, if they don't know who this mighty God is, and they're just going to look at it and be like, oh, that's hocus pocus. That's just evolution. That's just science. That's just this. So they'll name it and they will never know that that's the zeal of God. So for unto us, a child is born, enter the king, exit the darkness. The light of the world has come. So I hope you were blessed by this morning, Diva. I hope it gets you thinking. I hope it places it placed some, somebody in your mind, in your heart, amen, that you could pray for it today. Amen. And, um... If you want, please join me in prayer for my atheist friend that I found on online on a new app that we're, me and um, my brother in Christ are going in preaching the gospel. It's not easy. Um, people have questions. You know, people have hurt, have been hurt. Um, people, you know, are disgusted with the whole concept of the Lord Jesus, God, and everything. For whatever reason, uh, we don't know all the reasons, but... You know, we have to be respectful and mindful that everybody's not going to believe. Jesus said he wished that none should perish, but everyone have everlasting life through him. And that's my that's my hope, too. That's my wish, too. Why not? Amen. So God bless you all. God bless you. I hope you were all blessed. Um, make sure you go. I'm going to put a, a link to my group. Make sure you join the group. And I guess there's a way to follow and get notifications. Uh, I'm going to look around and find out. And if, when I find out information out, then I'll put it on the comments. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests, please let me know. If you want to keep them private, you can just inbox me or you could email me, DJ Sandrock at Soulwinners with a Z dot O-R-G. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace. <laughs>